يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب يا أيها الذين آمنوا دخلوا في السلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اذكروا الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مولانا رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن والاه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful All praises and thanks are due to Allah We ask His help and forgiveness And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls and our bad deeds Whomever Allah guides, no one can lead him astray and whomever Allah leads astray, no one can guide him. I bear witness that there is no God to be worshipped except Allah alone. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa peace be upon him, is his last messenger and his servant alayhi salatu wasalam. Dear respected brothers and sisters, inshaAllah ta'ala today we're going to start another episode with another verse from the Quran that starts with this call from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the believers when he says Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu O you who have believed and the verse that we're going to discuss today is still in Surah Al-Baqarah we are still in Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse 254 what is the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has here for us for the believers. We ask Allah to make us amongst those believers. Allah says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu anfiqu mimma razaqnaakum min qabli an ya'tiya yawm la bay'un fihi wa la khullatun wa la shafa'a wal kafiruna humul zalimun. As we normally do, I'm going to just to give a literal translation first and then we're going to go uh, to our brief commentary and the linguistic of this beautiful verse. Allah says, O believers, donate from what we have provided for you before the arrival of a day. In a day when you will have nothing of bargaining, friendship, intercession. Those who disbelieve are truly the wrongdoers. So that is the literal translation of the ayah. What is the main theme of this verse? What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about here? He's talking about the importance of supporting our communities financially. The importance of donations and is encouraging us to do this as soon as possible before the arrival of the Day of Judgment when we will never have any sort of bargaining, trade, friends, family members or anyone to intercede for us. I would like to start this verse by quoting Al-Imam Ibn Ashur rahimahullah ta'ala in his tafsir At-Tahrir wa tanwir He said هذا من لطف الله بعباده أن أمرهم بتقديم شيء مما رزقهم الله من صدقة واجبة ومستحبة ليكون ذخرا لهم. So the Imam Ibn Ashur رحمه الله تعالى is telling us here that when Allah سبحانه وتعالى speaks about donations or giving صدقات and charities for His sake عز وجل He's not asking us to do him a favor. He's not taking anything out of our pockets, Azza wa Jal. Because our money belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our wealth belongs to Rabbil Alameen. And even ourselves, we ourselves, 
belong to Allah Azza wa Jal. So that's what Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is doing here. He's doing us a favor by asking us to give some sadaqat. Why are you saying this? Because when you give sadaqat here, Allah is giving you the permission. He is giving us the chance to send some of our money from this world, from our bank accounts in this world, to our hasanat and good deeds accounts in the hereafter. It's going to basically, it's going to be savings for us. As Imam Ibn Ashur said, لِيَكُونَ لَهُمْ ذُخْرًا I'm not doing Allah a favor. I shouldn't even look at it as if I'm doing that needy person a favor when I give him some charity or some money to help him financially, to lift him up. I should see it as if he is doing me a favor that he came to ask me. He's giving me the chance to transfer some of my money in this world to my account in the Akhirah. This way of understanding our money and our wealth and whatever we have in this world is very clear in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. In this beautiful hadith that is narrated by Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala and others and it's an authentic hadith. One time the Nabi ﷺ he bought a, 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 a goat for his family ﷺ. And then after they slaughtered the goat, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went outside to sit with his community to handle some of their affairs. And Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha, she was at home cooking the goat and some people were helping her. her. Some, people, some people were helping her. And when he came back, he did not find anything from the goat except the shoulder. Only one piece from the whole goat. And it was his habit, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That was his habit with his people. Whenever he has money or he has some food, he doesn't leave anything in his house. He gives everything for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Some people might think that Rasulullah was poor. No, he wasn't poor. Because Allah told him in the Quran, in Surah al duha وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى O oh Muhammad, O oh Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala found you independent and He made you self-sufficient. He made you dependent. Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah wasn't poor. And we Muslims are not supposed to be financially weak. But He used to give everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has nothing left for Himself and His family sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Sayyida Aisha, she learned that from her husband, the Prophet So what she did after she cooked the goat, she gave everything to, his, to her neighbors and people who are in need. And when Rasulullah came back, she only left the shoulder for him and her to eat together. So Rasulullah said the question, he formed the question this way. He said to Aisha radiallahu anha, Ya Aisha, ma baqiya minha? What remained, what has remained from the goat that we just slaughtered? فَقَالَتْ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ ذَهَبَتْ كُلُّهَا إِلَّا كَتِفَهَا She said the whole goat is gone except for the shoulder because the only thing that we didn't give as a sadaqa to our neighbors and people are in need is the shoulder. So from her perspective, may Allah be pleased with her radiallahu anha, she sees it as the only thing that is left for us is what we're going to eat. What I have in my bank account, what I have at home, that's the only thing that I can touch, that I can see, that I can uh, uh, eat. That's how we see things in this world. What Rasulullah did is that he changed her perspective sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, بَلْ ذَهَبَتْ كل بَلْ بَقِيَتْ كُلُّهَا غَيْرَكَتِفِهَا He said, Ya Aisha, actually the proper understanding of this situation is that the whole goat has remained for us except for the shoulder, except for what we are going to eat, except for what I have on my bank account that I didn't help the needy 
with alayhi salatu wasalam. So Imam Ibn Ashur rahimahullah ta'ala is trying to teach us this idea. What remains for you in the hereafter is what you give right now for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have some money and I bought some clothes with my money. And I wear this cloth every day and over time it gets uh, uh, old and I cannot wear it anymore after a certain time. And I have used it. It's not going to remain for me in the Akhirah. I have bought some food, I'm eating my food and then it's going to go to waste. Or uh, uh, I have some drinks, I drink them and then nothing is left for me in the, in the hereafter. What is left for me? قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ابن آدم مالي مالي Sometimes the son of Adam when he has a lot of money that Allah gave him he forgets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who provided for him he goes around and becomes so proud of himself and he starts telling people that's because of what I have done that's because of my education that is because of uh, uh, my hard work that's because of uh, my good job that I have worked so hard to, 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 to gain my wealth, my wealth and then he said alayhi salatu wasalam وَهَلْ لَكَ يَا بْنَ آدَمْ مِنْ مَالِكَ إِلَّا مَا أَكَلْتَ فَأَفْنَيْتْ أَوْ لَبِسْتَ فَأَبْلَيْتْ أو تصدقت فأبقيت. He said, your money, Ibn Adam, O son of Adam, your money is divided into three categories. One of them is what you dress. And after some time, it's going to go to waste. And what you eat, and also this is not going to remain for you in the hereafter. Or what you give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the only thing that is going to be baqi, that is going to remain for you. أو تصدقت فأبقيت. So this is the idea of Imam Ibn Ashur rahimahullah ta'ala. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, anfiqu, donate, min tayyibati, from the good things that we have provided for you. What is Allah telling us here? He never said, anfiqu min tayyibati ma kasabitum, even though he said this in, in another ayah. But in this ayah, mimma razaqunakum, he is trying to indirectly indicate to us that whatever we have is not because of it, me. This is, the idea that I have been, this is the idea that I have been repeating over and over and over again, that all what we have is not because of us. It's because of Allah only. And we need to understand that. Anfiqu min ma razaqunakum. From what we have provided for you, the money belongs to us and we gave it to you, so give it in charity for my sake. And then he, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, min qabli ay yatiya yawmun la bay'un fihi wa la khullatun wa la shafa'a before the arrival of the day of judgment. How did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about the Day of Judgment in this verse? We're going to reflect on that after our break. Please stay tuned. Jazakumullahu khayran. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Welcome back to our second part of this episode and we are still discussing verse 254 in Surah Al-Baqarah which is chapter number 2 and we are talking about the idea of the importance of donation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in this verse the day of Qiyamah and he is urging people to hasten towards good deeds, hasten towards giving charity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before the arrival of the day of Qiyamah. And then he said subhanahu wa ta'ala, مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ يَوْمٌ لَا بَيْعٌ فِيهِ وَلَا خُلَّةٌ وَلَا شَفَاعَةٌ Before the arrival of a day when there will be no any bargaining, friendship or intercession. وَالْكَافِرُونَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ and the disbelievers are the wrongdoers. 
Now, this idea of hastening towards good deeds is always mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell us, please go ahead and do righteous deeds and compete with one another. It's a race towards Jannah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow all of us to Jannah. And in the Sunnah also you find the Nabi alayhi salatu salam, you find him mentioning some things in this world that can stop us from doing righteous deeds. So do righteous deeds ASAP before those things stop you. I will give you an example. This hadith that is reported by Imam Tirmidhi, rahimahullah ta'ala, in which the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Badiru bil a'mali sab'an. Do righteous deeds and hasten towards do righteous deeds before one of seven things, seven obstacles that can happen to you and stop you from doing righteous deeds. Seven obstacles. What are these seven obstacles that Rasulullah mentions in this hadith? Before uh, mentioning the three things that Allah mentioned in this ayah. Nabi Asim said, هَلْ تَنْتَظِرُونَ إِلَّا فَقْرًا مُنْسِيَةً Are you people waiting for poverty that will make you forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know when somebody is going through some financial problems, he can sacrifice a lot of things. He can forget about going to the masjid. He can forget about helping other people because he cannot even help himself. You don't find him uh, fasting voluntarily or giving sadaqat for the sake of Allah or praying uh, uh, voluntary prayers because he doesn't have time or he doesn't have money. He's so busy. So poverty can stop you. The second thing that can stop you in this hadith, mutghiya. Somebody has been given a lot of wealth by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he forgot about Allah. Ghinan mutghiya, al-tughiyan. This wealth is actually what led him towards disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Money took him away from Rabbil Alameen. Instead of obeying Allah and pleasing him with his money, he started to do haram things and displease Rabbil Alameen with the money that Allah gave him. And then Rasulullah said number three, أو مرضا مفسدا or sickness that can basically destroy your body. Now you're healthy, alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us healthy, Allahumma ameen. At some point if you fall sick and you cannot stand up in Qiyam al-Layl, you cannot look at the Mus'haf as you used to, you cannot serve Allah's religion as you used to, so be very careful of that time and do righteous deeds now before that time comes. And then he said, أو هرما مفندا or old age, old age that can make you very weak. You know now when you're young for example, young people, they can do more righteous deeds because they have a lot of energy than old people. Even though our seniors and our respected old people, they actually in fact do righteous deeds than the younger ones. But the younger ones are supposed to do more righteous deeds because they have a lot of energy. So the Prophet saying, do righteous deeds when you're young before you become very old and you cannot do them anymore. Number five, قال عليه الصلاة والسلام أو موتا مجهزا or a sudden death. Somebody might say, okay, I'm going to uh, donate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but he kept delaying and delaying I'm going to start praying at the masjid in jama'ah from today and then he delays no tomorrow you know what from next Friday you know what the Friday after that and he keeps he keeps delaying and delaying until death approaches him suddenly and then Rasulullah said he mentioned one of the signs of the hereafter or the arrival. Are you waiting for the arrival of a Dajjal? The worst awaited thing, the worst awaited Allah's creation, of Allah's creation is a Dajjal. You won't be able to worship Allah at that point because of his fitna and his tribulation. Don't wait for that. Are you still waiting for the last hour for the day of judgment to arrive? It's the most catastrophic and the most bitter. As Allah said in Surah Al-Qamar, 
بل الساعة موعدهم والساعة أدها وأمر So before the arrival of the last day or before any of these seven things that can happen to you donate for the sake of Allah and by the way somebody might say you know I don't have a lot of money to donate I'm actually I'm not wealthy I just can provide for myself and my family and that's it Alhamdulillah but I don't have a lot of money to donate donation here is not only in terms of financial support to others it also can be intellectual mental yeah, you help someone who is going through some depression some anxiety to talk things out with you and you give him solutions or socially you socialize with people and try to give them positive energy by praising them by encourage them to achieve their dreams that's also in fact that's also giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before the day of judgment arrives and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned these seven things in the hadith and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the day of qiyamah and he said on the day of qiyamah there are three main things that people rely on in this world that they will never find on the day of qiyamah he said من قبل أن يأتي يوم لا بيع فيه ولا خلة ولا شفاعة there is no bargaining on the day of Qiyamah. You know, people who are wealthy, but they are not close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They might say, you know, in this world I can solve all of my problems or most of my problems by paying somebody some money. And I can change the circumstances around me with my money. So they might think on the day of Qiyamah I can do the same thing. I have money. I have fame. No, you can't. Allah said, لا بيعن فيه There is no business, there is no trade, there is no bargaining. You're going to be on your own. The second thing people are going to miss on the day of judgment that they rely on in this world, الخلة. خلة is close, close friends. You know, I don't have a lot of money, but I have people around me. I have my community, my people love me. I have my family members, I have my siblings. You don't know how many brothers they have. On the day of Qiyamah, there is no khulla. Al khulla is the very close friend. That close friend that you have in this world, if he is not bringing you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah, you're going to regret that friendship. La bay'un fihi wa la khullatun. Number three, is there, someone to is there someone to intercede for me? In this world, when I have problems, I go to people who are important, powerful in the community, and I ask them for help to intercede for me to get that job or to uh, uh, pass this test or do whatever. Sometimes people do that. In the Akhirah, there is no intercession, except وَلَا يَشْفَعُونَ إِلَّا لِمَنْ ارْتَضَى Except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows someone to intercede for you, especially our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his shafa'atul uvma. His, his great intercession, alayhi salatu salam, we ask Allah Azza to grant all of us the intercession, the shafa'ah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ameen. Now I'm going to mention very briefly before the end of my episodes, very briefly inshallah, the main points in, in very brief points, what are the benefits of donating for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The first thing, this is the most important element of building a community giving financially uh, mentally socially supporting each other the most import important element to building a community uh, 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 number two the sadaqa which is voluntary charity it can become obligatory based on the need of people around you and based on the need of your community and your nation and then the last statement Allah mentioned in this ayah وَالْكَافِرُونَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ And the disbelievers are the wrongdoers. عطاء ابن دينار رضي الله عنه When he recited this ayah, he said, الحمد لله That Allah said, praise be to Allah. Thank, I, I'm thanking Allah. Because he said, the disbelievers are the wrongdoers. And he did not say instead, وَالظَّالِمُونَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ the wrongdoers are the disbelievers. Otherwise, everyone who does bad deeds 
is going to end up being a disbeliever, which is not the case. Just disbelief is the major sin in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Ata ibn Dinar reflected on this ayah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all of us from those who donate for his sake. Allahumma ameen. Wa aqulu qawli hadha wa jazakumullahu khayran. Wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب يا أيها الذين آمنوا دخلوا في السلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا 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 يا 